All right, thank you very much. So we'll start with you, uh, Dr. Mirza Dene. Um, thank you, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, uh, George. Um, these days are actually are very dangerous days uh, and very sad days uh, in the history of the Yazidis because um, it reminds us to all what that happened in 2014. And not only that, it also uh, reminds us to what has happened to our ancestors in the last thousands of years because Yazidi survived 72 genocide in the past. And we had a, a huge terror attack, actually the biggest terror attack in 2007 from Al-Qaeda uh, committed against Yazidi community in uh, uh, and now in 2014, uh, in humanity and, and the, the international community happened to the Yazidis uh, because it is not only a, a usual genocide. Uh, uh, what has happened to the Yazidis? Uh, um, differently to what's happened in, in all victim uh, communities in the past uh, hundred years that not only uh, genocidal act like killing, extermination, uh, but also the biggest issue was with the uh, uh, sexual abuse and and uh, what has happened to slavery in the 21st uh, century. Every, um, uh, definitely in all other experiences with Rwanda or Bosnia or other where, where genocide crime has happened, uh, uh, rape was also part of genocidal acts did actually to the Yazidi women and girls was they legalized the 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 rape as a, a, a legal measure established a system for for sexual abuse they established uh, actually sharia court uh, for uh, for this was completely different to what the perpetrators in boston did because they the, the perpetrator in those countries did and they knew that they are doing a criminal act and they but in because they thought they are implementing a uh, religious uh, duty so uh, and therefore uh, the the issue with the yazidi victim is more complicated uh, than uh, any other issues uh, in the um, uh, in in in, in, the, in the victims as community in general also and the individuals so this is the it is so a shame that uh, even after eight years that uh, people from my community, two third community are still in the IDP camps or they escape the country and they are uh, seeking somewhere asylum in, in, in other cities, maybe in, in, in the countries between Iraq and, and Europe. And, uh, uh, and the next uh, uh, point that the, uh, even the, the region Sinjar was, rebuilt. Uh, we definitely uh, uh, are happy with the local organization who are doing some job for, for the victims and definitely this work is, is crucial but it's just like put, uh, to put a, a drop of water on a, a, on a hot stone so you can't see the effect on the Yazidi community. You have still see um, the majority of the Yazidi community tent in the IDP tent in Kurdistan. You, you see the lack of finance. You, you see the problems with implementation of the um, uh, Yazidi survival law. The women, and uh, you know that um, the uh, you, your different your NGOs, uh, even after one year was necessary to to make an appeal in order to implement the uh, the the point uh, the different paragraphs of the of the of the law which is uh, uh, which is shameful for the 
uh, authorities to to uh, to stuck in in that point that they didn't implement the law until now. So this is the situation uh, after eight years. Uh, even for us as Yazidi human rights activists and also Yazidi and non-Yazidi NGOs who are working with the Yazidis, either local and international, it's so difficult to uh, to do more without support from the international community, without support from the Iraqi government. What we need uh, in the near future that uh, the implementation of the Yazidi women survivor law should be uh, done in a proper way uh, the international community, uh, Western countries together with Iraq should implement and establish a special international fund to rebuild Sinjar. They should speak with the Yazidi people uh, how they would like to have their life in the future. We know that Sinjar since 2017 has no administration, even no no normal administration, no mayor, no, uh, no, no any work. There is no any kind of investment in that area. So I think uh, today is a time to raise our voice again and to ask the international community, to ask the Iraqi government to do more in order to, uh, to, uh, to protect the future of this uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, community in Iraq. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dene. Um, now I'm going to move to allow Ms. Suran Mohammed Faraj to speak. Um, Ms. Suran Han is, works at the Halabja Memorial um, where she gives people tours and educates people about the Anfal genocide and the genocides committed against her people. Um, Suran Han, can you share with us your experience in guiding people through the Halabja Memorial, and also you were in our video, um, Leila Shmitz Halabja, where you actually met with members of the Yazidi community uh, and you both shared experiences. Could you also speak to the, the power of that meeting? Suhan, did you um, hear me? Uh, if you allow me, I will translate the few questions that, that Suhan Khan can, can speak uh, about her experience. Uh, sure. Suhan Khan, I want to pursue your experience in the future of the Yazidis and the Yazidis uh, Halabcho, uh, Awana Derchubun, uh, Hazakan Jel, uh, Tajrube Hotan, uh, Begrin Ogan Chitajubatan Abulasar Obavata, Ferm. Abalas Lotan Lebet, Eoratam Bash, Lastia Miniki Kimlonica, Berko Tuchi Kimiaim, La Halabte Shahid, La Stahosh Taman Okatek Chiki Genshbun. او کار ساته به سر حلب جهات منیش بجداری کار ساته که بوم حلبت برینداریش بوم به چکی کیمیایی جستم سودا و در بدری ایران بوین و دوی او گرائی نو حلب جه لکه سو کار کم جماری که زور خلق تیاد شو یکی گلوانه خوش که اکمه که هر دیار نیا لراستیا کار ساته که زور زور دروز بو زور زور بلا موا تأثیراتی زور ناخوشی لسر درونم درست کرد و به استاش شوا بایا بجداری کردنم لو فلما با او بو که بکچان یزیدی و جنان یزیدی بلم راست او کار ساته زور قرز بو در بدر بو این من کچه کی گنج بو تأثیراتی زور لسر درونم درست کرد و بلام لبر اوی جیان برده اما که گرام و حلب جا جاری که لسر پی خوم استام و نمیشد او کار ساته بم رو خیلی و هم لیب که که بب مکسی سودم نبیل کامل گیا بایه به انواع شیوه من هول منا با اوی بب ما بم جنی استا بم سورانی استا بش بش ترجمه ای اکی یا همو چی رو که کم باس کم یا 
Yes, it's working. Um, Suran, can you speak about your work at the memorial? Um, why that's important for you as a Halabja survivor? So I think what we'll do is, if she can, if she can't hear us, we'll just um, we'll move on to um, Mr. D'Souza for the moment while we work through those issues. Ryan D'Souza works. He for the nobody's listening, which is a virtual reality experience that educates people on the genocide, um, uh, as well as sorry here uh, that works on New Zealand. He has been working on human rights advocacy and genocide prevention for the last ten years. He's worked on the UN investigative team to promote accountability for crimes committed against uh, by Dash and ISIL and the UN assistance mission in Somalia and was a visiting uh, fellow at University of Oxford. Um, Ryan, Mr. D'Souza has also worked at the US Holocaust Memorials Museum Center for the Prevention of Genocide. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Josh. And uh, yeah, thank you so much to you, to GN Foundation, and also uh, Boyan and Wansa, and then the Coalition for Just Reparations for inviting me and, and hosting today's call, uh, which is very important. Uh, before I start talking about Nobody's Listening, I want to just go back a little bit to talk about uh, my past experience, which led me to Nobody's Listening. And um, previously, I was working at an NGO in New York called the Global Center for Responsibility to Protect, um, also known by its abbreviation R2P, uh, which is a global commitment made by all governments around the world in 2005, where they committed to protecting populations from war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity. And a central pillar of the responsibility to protect is around prevention. Uh, sadly, we know from history that uh, too often countries that have experienced conf conflict often go back and slide back into conflict and atrocities again. And this is one of the indicators of the UN's framework for atrocity crimes. And that is why peace building, memorialization, transitional justice are essential to building national resilience uh, to ensure we fulfill our promise to never again. Um, after New York, I joined the UN, as you mentioned, in Somalia, where I worked on the rule of law. And it was interesting to see there just, you know, Al-Shabaab, um, the terrorist group committing widespread and systematic um, atrocities against the civilian population. I was also fortunate there to work with the office of the mayor of Mogadishu to encourage um, his office and the mayor uh, to build a memorial in the aftermath of one of the largest suicide truck bombings in um, Africa, which took place on the 14th of October in 2017. And it's really great to see how this memorial acts as a sign of resilience um, of the Somali people in the face of violent extremism, while also serves as a place of remembrance for the victims um, and their families as well. Uh, during my time in Somalia, I would also try and visit uh, during my holidays as many genocide memorials as possible, which included ones in Cambodia, Armenia, Guatemala, Uganda, Rwanda, Auschwitz and Srebrenica. And it was, um, it was interesting to see, you know, how these memorials are being used and you know, the majority of the reason was to maintain a historical narrative of what happened in those places. And this might be for tourists coming into the country, but more often than not, it's used as an educational tool for future generations. And it was really wonderful to see you know, young students, young people from that country, as well as from other countries, visiting the memorials and the museum as well. It was also really important to see it as a place for foreign dignitaries to visit um, at the time of the anniversaries to express their solidarity with the victim communities and pledge more political and sometimes financial support to prevent this from happening again. Um, also just to note that sadly, when I went to the 22nd anniversary of the Srebrenica genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, I could see blatant revisionism and genocide denialism by some of the communities in the area, uh, which shows that more work is needed to be done. And that's why recognition and injustice is so vital as well. Um, and this coupled um, with, you know, visiting this wonderful inspirational exhibition in Sarajevo was one of the reasons for creating and, 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 and founding Nobody's Listening. Uh, Nobody's Listening is an innovative advocacy initiative that we had the honor of starting with Yazda uh, to raise awareness about the Yazidi genocide, where we use art and photography and then virtual reality to highlight the atrocities uh, they faced as well as other components in Iraq 
with the aim of inspiring political action to address their needs. Um, the centerpiece of the exhibition is a VR experience, a virtual reality experience, which is the first time this technology has been used for this purpose in Iraq. It's 12 minutes long. It talks about life before the genocide, what happens during the genocide, and then the situation today. We filmed everything in Iraq, so you get to walk around the scenes where the crimes took place in Sinjar, and it also includes uh, verbatim testimony from survivors. Uh, with thanks to USAID and IOM, we were able to premiere this in the Iraqi parliament in 2020, and we showed it to 120 people as part of a research um, assessment that was led by the Digital Cultural Heritage Research Center in Suleimani. I've also been grateful to show the VR alongside Yazda and the Yazidi survivor networks, including Salwa, who I believe will be speaking soon, uh, to foreign uh, ministers, as well as showing this in other events around the world as well. And I hope that this is not only just an advocacy tool, but can also be a record of what happened, capturing the stories and the scenery for future generations to understand what happened and that we never forget what happened as well. And it was an honor to give one of the headsets to Dr. Mirza for his um, brilliant um, Center for Coexistence. And I hope that as many people uh, possible will be able to use it. Uh, we also want to take the VR on our, on our exhibition to other genocide memorial centers around the world and have moments for survivors to come together and express their solidarity with each other. And hopefully this can also serve as an opportunity so that they can learn about what happened and you know um, post genocide and share advice about advocacy and create these networks of solidarity to help each other and strengthen the genocide prevention agenda as a whole. Uh, finally, just to, to wrap up, I had the honor of attending uh, the 20th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide in Kigali. And there was a number of world leaders and the UN Secretary General visiting uh, Kigali to express their solidarity with the victims of the genocide and talk about and re-emphasize the need to ensure this never happens again. Today, the UN still doesn't formally recognize the genocide against the Yazidis and others, and only a handful of governments do. Um, what we need is a UN General Assembly resolution to recognize the genocide internationally, and Rwanda serves as a useful model in this regard. Uh, a resolution established then has um, created um, an international day of reflection for the Rwandan genocide, and it also called on the UN to memorialize the genocide and also establish an outreach program to teach about the genocide. I believe the Yazidi survivors law, as, as Dr. Mirza mentioned, uh, was an incredible achievement by the government of Iraq and very key that you know, partners from civil society and the survivors uh, played a key role in, in securing its passage. I really hope that this law can be a catalyst to build momentum for an international day of reflection for the genocide committed by Daesh. And that's why the genocide uh, memorial in Sinjar and um, other memorials are so key to doing this. And I really support the efforts by the coalition and their incredible campaign to have this established. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Ryan. Um, you know, and I just want to highlight here that in the Yazidi Survivors Law, it is in Article 5 that highlights um, the construction of a, of a memorial specifically for the Yazidi. And it also um, urges other groups to the Iraqi government to build similar uh, memorials for other groups. Um, now, the reason we included the Halabj Memorial here is because uh, it's, it's a large memorial. And something that you said, Ryan, was that there are people who are denying um, genocide and, and denying Holocaust costs. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the, the time that passes by. Um, and that's why these kinds of memorials are so important to us. Um, and I was hoping that uh, Dr. Mirza, you are from Sinjar, you are from the region. Um, could you speak about the, the importance of having a memorial there for the local people? Uh, Thank you, Josh. Um, I think it's most important uh, uh, in this match, uh, uh, although Iraq uh, didn't implement yet uh, the procedure of transitional justice, there are many things missing. It's just like a, a puzzle. We try to put uh, something there and something there, but there is no uh, a main picture of this puzzle that we know that transitional justice is completely implemented. 
but um, to make such kind of memorial in Sinjar, at least for the local community and also for the neighbors, because we know that many of the neighbors uh, committed these crimes against the Yazidis, like everywhere uh, that has happened in the other experiences, is not done better than what Yazidis. So, uh, and it's so important that everybody can see this monument and see that it was the place where where genocide has happened and also to honor the victims, their family members. So it is so important to have such kind of memorials uh, in region Sinjar, at least uh, to remind the people and uh, Ryan uh, told us a very important point. So to remind us what has happened in this area and that nothing and uh, shouldn't be happening again. shouldn't be uh, uh, take place in all communities. There are important memorials for the people. If you go to Halabcha and see this memorial of Halabcha, so every day, there's the family members, at least of the victims, they know that there is something in In Sinjar, uh, dislike to what uh, in all teams in the mass graves and, uh, uh, and uh, the mass graves are, are not exhumed until now. The, the identity of the victims is not uh, identified because uh, still uh, from uh, up from 83 uh, mass graves, only 31 have been exhumed and only 147 from the, from the, uh, from the victims uh, uh, have been identified. So you can imagine the, 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 the pain that the people there have. And the, the pain uh, and and the and the the, uh, the fear that the people and concerns uh, that the people think that everybody want to forget what has happened to the Yazidis. So, therefore, it's important to to put some monuments. Oh, thank you. Um, so, unfortunately, we are having some connection difficulties with our panelists um, from the region. Uh, but we do, however, have a question that I think is important to ask. And if you do have questions, um, you can please add them at this time because we, we also have a little more time now due to these technical issues. Um, we'll try to get them back if we can. So our question, um, Dr. Mirza, maybe this is for you or Ryan, you may, you may have an idea as well. Is there a consensus or at least an idea within the Yazidi community on what kind of memorialization they prefer? As you can see, we've had different types here. We've had the standard memorial or monument. Um, Nobody's Listening also has a digital experience. Um, is there a consensus on the type of memorialization they prefer and where it should be erected? Is there a line of communication with the Directorate for Survivors Affairs to convey their preferences concerning memorialization? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, let me let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I know what I know from from my friends in the Nadia initiative that there is a, a plan of of, of uh, it is a private initiative mainly is not a is not from the Iraqi government. What we ask for that the Iraqi government should make some uh, memorial and monuments for the for the Yazidi genocide. Uh, but there is from the Nadia initiative a, a, a very good. Uh, a proposal to and, th and I, I think they they are going to start it uh, in the next time uh, to in the place where uh, genocide where where uh, where the crimes against the mothers we we call this mass graves the mass graves of the mothers so uh, in this place there will be a monument built and organized through Nadia initiative. Uh, so in the Yazidi community, it is so important to honor every victim of the Yazidi genocide in, in, in Sinjar. There is no uh, the, an initiative or there is no plan, direct plan. We suppose that the Iraqi government has to do that or the ministry has to do that, not, not the normal people. Uh, but, uh, but for example, let me let me raise also this impo very important engagement from Ryan and nobody's listening. So this kind, because I have pers personally this experience, I 
use this um, kit. Uh, so it was so important to show the people, especially who cannot visit Shingal, to see something from the from the from from the situation from the area. I, I think it is so important to enrich that film, uh, this virtual reality film, and uh, to put a lot of document and also a lot of information in in that uh, plan. I hope that nobody's listening is going to enrich that and to put more more uh, information uh, about the genocide, about the mass graves. So, uh, but it is was so crucial. I saw it by those people who are not visiting Iraq, never in Iraq, and saw the the this that film. So this is also a way to reach out the people outside of Iraq. If I can jump in there, Josh. Definitely. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Dr. Mirza, for your very kind words. I'm always appreciated to, to get any very kind words from a, from a hero like you. Um, regarding just two other aspects I just wanted to add in as well. Um, what we saw with Nobody's Listening as part of the research that was led by the Digital Cultural Heritage Research Center, we showed the VR to um, 120 people in cities such as Baghdad, Kukuk, uh, Suli, Dohuk, and, um, and a couple of others. And it was interesting, you know, those in Baghdad or Suli, just how many people did not know what happened, even though it was in the same country, and it was only eight years ago, how few people recognized what happened, um, whether they knew about the atrocities or recognized this as a genocide. So there's plenty of work still to be done. And I think, as Dr. Mears has said, what's important is ensuring this accessibility and I think as part of the work that happens, you know, whether it's a memorial in uh, a Shingal or whether you can have a separate memorial created elsewhere, but there are different ways that the information could be shared. Um, and I think what's absolutely key to that was discussions I had previously with IOM and the UNESCO chair on the genocide um, of prevention studies, Dr. Salah Al-Jabri at the University of Baghdad, is how do you create some kind of mechanism where you could have university students or school students from other parts of Iraq go to the memorial in Shingal and also what uh, happened here recently in terms of having survivors go and speak to people in Halabja or come to Baghdad and of course nobody's listening can be integrated into that but what's more important is that this isn't just a static memorial but we create an outreach program as well with the memorial. Um, that's inside Iraq and I just want to say as well that's absolutely key and focus that we create this a memorial in uh, Shingal, and it's great to see Nadia's initiative uh, taking the lead on doing so. Uh, but what's also very important is to create memorials outside of Iraq. Um, I was very happy to see, and I visited a memorial for the Yazidi genocide in a northern suburb of Paris. And it was a very small plaque and memorial, uh, which probably didn't cost that much. And, you know, it was done at the initiative of that local mayor. But I remember putting it on my social media and just it was lovely to see the response by different um, survivors and Yazidi activists saying, oh, it's lovely to see that people um, think about us outside of Iraq or people care about us. So I was gonna say that it's also important for other governments and other um, activists as well to see how do we create um, um, you know, satellite uh, memorials or kind of uh, plaques uh, to remember the Yazidi genocide so that you know, this is seen as being an international collective responsibility as much as it is the primary responsibility in Iraq as well. And um, we have a good question that I think kind of relates to what you just said. And then I'll try to move back to um, Suranhan uh, for the final word here. But speaking to Ryan's reference to the lack of formal UN and international recognition of genocide against the Yazidi community, what's the potential impact of a UN resolution formally recognizing the genocide? Could that resolution help to pave the way for justice and accountability? And if so, how? And has it been done elsewhere? Thanks so much. I mean, um, not to say that such a resolution is going to be, you know, the panacea and will lead to justice and accountability straight away. Of course, that's a long process. Um, but just to say two things. One is um, using the Rwandan genocide um, as a, as a, um, a model. Um, there in 2004, what led to the famous resolution that created the International Day of Reflection, uh, the, day, the resolution that preceded was about reparations and financial assistance uh, to victims of sexual violence and orphans as well. So as part of the resolution could be talking about reparations, transitional justice, um, whilst also talking about the work of UNITAD and the need to promote 
uh, the need for justice. Um, ultimately, these are just symbolic kind of resolutions. Um, every year, um, you know, the Secretary General is now laying a wreath of remembrance for the victims of the Rwandan genocide. But as part of it, that is a there's an annual debate which happens where you know governments come and express their solidarity as well. And these are just moments where we can talk about has there been justice? Um, has there been other types of activities taking place to help the survivors? And so just another opportunity for governments to use these opportunities to talk about what they're doing or what they're not doing and for civil society to call for more action as well. But really it depends what's being debated within the resolution. And as you mentioned, there's article five of the Yazidi survivor law, but there's also article seven of the Yazidi survivors law, which talks about the responsibility of the Iraqi foreign ministry in revealing the international crimes in international forums. And as part of that is um, a link to justice and accountability. So that could be weaved into the resolution to talk about the collective responsibility of all governments to hold perpetrators of these crimes um, to account. Thank you, Ryan. Um, a very important part of this discussion that we wanted to include the voices of survivors and people on the ground there. So Suran Han, are you with us? Yes. Okay, that's that's rather um, unfortunate uh, that our other two speakers couldn't be with us here today. Um, all right. Well, then, uh, if we have any more other questions, now is a would be a great time to include them. Otherwise, what I'll do is, um, Dr. Miaza, I'll give you the opportunity now for a. Uh, Closing remarks. Oh, Suran, are you with us? Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you could join us. So before we left, uh, I asked you about uh, at the Halab Memorial. Um, your experience at the Halab Memorial touring people through it. Uh, what kind of reactions or questions do you get from perhaps people within the community or outside of the community? بله <laughs> سرمان هات مونومنتي هلا بتدرس كراوة هرشن بداخه وإعلام رنج ب رنما أو مونومنتال لتشاو أو كارسات الجورا شتكي بتشوك بيه بلام هر جرينجو مهمة كبومان كراوة وزور جار لمونومنتك كي ما رين طبعا مونومنتك ميجو أجيرته بس يوي تلر سازي كي با لنا هنا ريكي با أو مجسمات وبيكراني كلويا وزائدا بوكساني كبركوتون لنا مونومنتك دوام كان همويان ميجوكا اجيرنو او ميجوي كارساتا اجيرنو زور جارمن وكو ميوان اجليو بمياوكو اوي كتشوم بو اوي او ازاري لدل ما لرقي مونومنتك او لدل ما درشت چون سيرم كردو ميواني لبو ليان پرسيوم اي ام راستا ام يوانانا ام مجسمانا ام شهيدانا تو لرجيه اي تو لكاتي كيميا كالي ربوي اي چي تانكر اي بو كيو چون اما انا كوملا برسياري كن كلامن اكرا زور جار خلقي عربي ليبوا اجنبي ليبوا وتو عن تو بفعلي لناو كيميا بارانا كابوي وتو مبالي ليبوا كلا دمي خوم جو عن ليبوا زياتر شوازي مونومنتكا كارساتكا زينو بو تولا لعيان يعني بو شوا ماتيا نما بو مونومنت زور زور قرنقا لروي كوملاياتي و قرنقا لروي مجوية وغرنقا لروي هنر الروشن بيري ومونومنت غرنقا جغالة ولروي اقتصادية وغرنقا بو او شوانة كم مونومنتا كي بو دروسا كريا هولوكوست و او شوانة كم مونومنت يان بو دروس كريا لروي عبوري و بو بسر چاوية كي عبوري باش بو او شعري كا كارساتا كلي رويا بو يمن لقل دروس كردني مونومنتا مونومنت براستي ايلم بيج قلم هموشتاني كوتم قربوا يكي روحيا 
که تو ابینی بر کوتیت آزاره هیا قربانیت برندار بودی جستت سودا و بلام ابینی حکمت کرد کامل خالق لقل تویان بنوم بمنومنت گوستیانه کمی گل آزاره کت کم کنه لری روحی و تو آرام بیت و بوی من همیشه که سری منومنت که کم علم اگر هیچیش من دستکود نبود بیت و اگر توشی ام همون آرحتیش بودم گرین جوی منومنت کرا و کباز ل آزاره کنی من که بوی منومنت با شنگال با هم آشنایی که کار ساده برن گرینگا و بیت گلوش بابا نخوشه کنیش منومنت گرینگا شد می امهر با کارساتی نخوشو کشتنو برین منومنت درست کن ولاتیک کلتوری جوانیه به ولاتیک ثقافتی جوانیه به حکومتیک که زور زور هاشیر بید حوله منومنت با کارسات خوشو نخوشه کنی درست کن Thank you. Um, in our uh, video we did, Lailish meets Halabja, you met with the Yazidi uh, representatives of the Yazidi community there who are also on the C4JR Survivors Council. Could you share that experience with us? Maybe uh, something you learned or the conversations you had with them in particular? من او ویدیوی که کرد منشته که زور زور صدقه بود لرگی که خو زور خوشحالی کردم لبری آنه کامل اکتی گنج بون کار ساد بر بون که حتی بونه حالا بجا پیم خوش بود که منو هاورکانی من ببینن چون که لکاتی کیمیا که منی شوک آن کتی کی گنج بوم من هشده سالان بوم تازه ایتر پی اگشتم بالام که گرامه راستا استاد به هی تکنولوژیا به هی چاوی که امریکان به هی ام دنیا کراویا کار ساده کان زو اگاته همو دنیا لکاتی اما دنیا زور تسق بوش تکانی اما تنا لچاوی یک دو کامیره و من سفرم کرد با لبنان لبنان نیان از آنی حالا بچه کیه نیان از آنی حالا بچه چیه بدای خواب لم صالانه لجامعی اسلامی مقابلی تلبی جامعی آکرا ایوش امروز شانزی سیا لشانزی سیا چی رویا و بدای خواب نیان از آنی چی رویا و یعنی کار ساده که نه از آنی بوی من امی از من کم باش کم لگلیان امی پیان بله منیش کتک بوم که ایوا منیش کار ساده بار بوم منیش کسی کارم تیاتو او خانوی که ویدیو کم انتیا کرو او مالکی امی او جوری نسنکی ایمه که با آرامیتی اخوتی است بابا کلاوا بالام لگل آوا من لسرتی خم استام آوا من نج مال دو مالشم درست کرد نج دو مالم درست کرد سنتری کم درست کرد و است بابا منالانی خان پدایستی تایبت لبه خدمتی منالانی خان پدایستی تایبت کم باختم درست کرد و گل بخی و کم درخت بخی و کم جندر بخی و کم لا باخ کم آم اما نه همو باید کردم با اوی به همو دنیای بلم چند دستی استم زور بید اگر ایرادت ها به اتوانی لسرشانو پی خود بوستی تا با تنیاش بید با برین داریش بید با جنیش بید با ایستم لگل کتی زیدی کانا آو باش کم پیان بلم من هاوشی اوی ایوم ایوش روشه اگر به دو کومن لسر پیو دستی خودتان آوست Thank you Thank you a very powerful message that, that you're sharing. Um, and I know that the replies from our, our participants there, everyone was very impressed um, with not only your ability to convey what had happened, but your ability to transform that, I think, into something hopeful. Um, and you, you spoke also about how these monuments, memorials also offer uh, an economic incentive to the, to the local community which I also think is something that is over, always overlooked um, um, with these. Uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stuart Han, for your comments. من خوام من خوام با اوی بخشی سنترکم دروس کم کم نالان یاری تیاب کن روشتم بری سنوبرم هینا رنگا و رنگم کرد لبردمی منومنت که فروشت ما لسر عربانه دامنا فروشت ما با پاری بخشی کم دروس کرد لناو سنترکم با اوی منالکم لناو گلو چی منا بجین یعنی به هزار شو تو اتوانی سود لمنومنت ورگیری هر اوانی تو بری مأسات ناخوشه که بگیری تو اتوانی لری او مأسات ناخوشه و دنیا از منی جوان yeah, that's quite powerful. 
Um, so we are about to wrap up. We have 10 more minutes here. Unfortunately, um, our Yazidi participant, uh, Salwa Sedo Omar, is unable to join us. She, I will give a little brief about her. She's also in the video, Lailish meets Halabja. Um, she was a survivor of ISIS or Daesh cruelty, and she's on the C4JR Survivors Council as a member of the Yazidi community. Um, she currently lives in a displacement camp in the region. Um, but unfortunately, she, she was not able to share her personal experience with us today due to technical difficulties in the region. Right now, um, I'd like to move to closing remarks from each panelist. We'll go in order of uh, how you were presented. So Dr. Mirza. Um, thank you very much, Josh. Uh, thank you very much, Soran Khan, for your uh, powerful message. Uh, just uh, you, you are speaking from bottom of our hearts for every victim, for everyone who is working with the victims, not only the victim. Um, this moral reparation is the title that Soran Khan used, the moral reparation for those victims. This is one of the targets of the memorial. But the most important uh, is that those people can feel themselves secure and feel themselves safe and that this will show an experience to the next generation that such kind of crimes shouldn't be happen is not allowed to be happen again and i i i remember a, a, a nice it is a painful but a nice word from baba sheikh who passed away two years ago uh, who said uh, we survived 72 genocide in the past nobody heard our voice but now we feel that the, we have a solidarity with the other, the, we have, uh, as the other community have solidarity with us and our voices somehow heard. Now we need this point to move on to the next point. The voices here, there should be an action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to this panel. Thank you very much. Um, Ryan, Ryan, I'll let you have your final word now. Thanks, Josh, and also thank you to Dr. Mears and Soran as well as, as co-panelists. I just jotted That's down good. a few. Um, I jotted down a few points, and and just to kind of round up, um, I've been working on on the Yazidi genocide since 2016, and and I've worked on different genocides uh, previously as well. And you know, it's it's been an honor of my of my lifetime to have worked with very closely with Yazda yeah. and Dr. Mirza, Yazidi activists different NGOs and, and also, of course, with the survivors. And, you know, in a short space of time, we've seen incredible success, thanks to the incredible work of the survivors, of the Yazidi NGOs, activists, as well as, you know, other groups such as the Coalition for Just Reparations um, and different community members as well in, in pushing the needle uh, forward. Um, you know, to have, um, you know, UNITAD being established so quickly after the genocide, uh, whether it's Dr. Mirza winning the Aurora Laureate Prize, uh, Nadia winning the Nobel Peace Prize, or, you know, um, uh, the YSL being implemented, sorry, um, initiated and passed and now to be implemented. Uh, this is really phenomenal progress. Um, again, thanks to the incredible advocacy. But of course, you know, there's still so much work that needs to be done when we look at the mental health crisis, when we look at missing persons, of course, justice and accountability. There's still plenty of work that needs to be done despite the progress achieved. And I think memorials um, obviously play an important role in protecting and maintaining that historical narrative of what happened to prevent this happening in the future. But what's also equally important, it should be used as a political tool uh, by activists and others to kind of inspire more um, action to be taken every single year. And also to kind of inspire and motivate stakeholders about what they're not doing as much as that what they are doing as well. So that's why the memorial in, in Shingal and other places are so key and important. And for, last but not least, just a very selfish point, uh, nobody's listening does use art and virtual reality as a different form of, you know, um, of, of, of tool to kind of explain and, um, different narratives and stories. And I hope that, you know, whatever future memorial that is built doesn't necessarily need to use nobody's listening. There are many other art exhibitions that have been created around the ZD exhibit, um, uh, genocide but hopefully these different ways of conveying messages, stories, testimony can also be used as well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and Saran, I'll give you the final word here. 
بله خوشحال بوم منیش براستی که امرو لم که بونه ویل گل تانا بوم هیوا دارم توانی بیتم سود یکم گیانده با کیسی جینو سایدی یزیدی اکان و همو او جنانی که قربانین به دستی جنگوا هیوا دارم توانی بیتم او خزمت بکم کتا پیامیشم اویا همو جاره علم نادیا مراد رمزی براعتی کچانی یزیدی بو منیش راجع لراجان دواء كم رمزي براءة كتاني هلا بجبم برمزي كم بو أو جنانا أو كتاني كليرة ببي تاوان كجران دسو تشاو تان خوش بيلا هر شوينك خزمت بهر كيسي تي جينو سايدو قتلو آم هبت من لغي خزمت كاريكا نامي دوبارة بيتو أو تاوان Thank you very much. I think we're all in um, agreement on, on this issue. And it, thank you everyone for participating in this discussion. I think we shed some light on the importance of memorialization. Uh, for those of you watching, you can visit c4jr.org to see the petition, which was signed by over 70 organizations, um, organizations from different uh, ethnicities or who represent different cultural backgrounds. Uh, and I think that, along with this panel, um, especially Suron's involvement here, demonstrates the, the desire for solidarity uh, among groups and the desire to, to move forward um, with, with healing and with memorialization here. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this will be recorded and clipped and you will be able to find this on Jian Foundation's YouTube page. You can also see the video Leila Shmit Salabja on Jan Foundation's YouTube page or shared on social media. Thank you very much, everybody.